Joining us now live on Skype is Jean Bay, professor of economics at Augsburg University. Jean, thanks so much for joining us this morning. You heard those unemployment numbers that came out early this morning staggering. The national number 6.6 .6 million people there. I mean, as an economist, have we ever even come close to anything like this? No, because um, typically um, we've had we've had some shocks. This is a shock. So the closest we've had to a shock has been in the 70s with the oil crisis, and then in the 1980s with a with a great recession before that point. Some of the deepest. So in that point, we went from 4.4 unemployment to 10.8 within about six months. But this is even faster, and we've never tried to essentially induce a coma in an economy before. Yeah, interesting way of putting it, Gene. This is a mm -hmm. this is like a medically induced coma in that the government shut down, you know, the entire hospitality and service industry. On top of it, all the people who kind of work uh, independently and are uh, working at home, those kind of small business owners and sole proprietors, those people uh, just have absolutely no demand for their service. So it's it's a tricky thing where you can't pull the normal levers of the economy to try to get things moving right no because if you do if your job is face to face then you're unemployed and it's not just as the earlier one was talking about that unemployment is good it provides a base income but it's not going to replace all your income let alone all your other benefits but you have to worry about the salon owners and the health club owners are they going to be in business two months from now because even though they're not taking in any revenue they still have rent and other and other expenses they have to pay a lot of small businesses are under duress as well as their employees you talk about that, these small businesses, and will they make it? I wonder, do you think there's going to be some huge structural change to how our economy and how our job market even works when we do come out of this? I I, I think it depends on how long it lasts, right? I mean, if if I think the I think it's not surprising that more people now nationally are worried about the financial implications than they are about the actual illness, um, because. The reality is that the death rate is, even at 100,000, is less than tenth of 1%. It's a small number, okay? Most people who get it are, are sick, they're, but they're mildly sick. There's only a small number. But so many people have lost income, have lost businesses, so that's going to be the issue. How fast can we get back to work? Yeah, and, and do it and do it safely, right? Exactly. Safely. That's the key. Yeah, the death rate is low, but when you multiply it by the number of people who are coming down with this, when you're looking at 100, 200,000 people, perhaps you understand why the government took action here. Yes, but 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 we're running essentially a natural experiment because, as people know, Sweden did not shut down as many places, and their death rate's actually a little bit higher than ours, um, but it's still less than one percent. So the question is, what's the right approach? Because poverty causes death and illness, too. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the issue. I think it's a balancing act. It, I mean, it's an extremely delicate balancing act. And you talk about, Jason talked about the safety. You talked about the safety is getting the economy and getting the people back safely so that the economy can get running again. And we have confidence that we can go back to yeah. our workplace. Jean, I have a question about something Susan Elizabeth said in her story, as it seems as if there's almost a shift in the kinds of jobs that people should be looking for. Do you see this for people that may be out of work, the chance now to change opportunities and, and change what they've been doing before? Well, when you look at, so one thing people might think in the future is, how possible is it to work from home? There's been a couple of studies about how possible it is, and of course, the higher paying jobs are more, it's more likely you can work from home. Lawyers can work from home, software developers can work from home, but again, people, and if you're doing people to people contact, you cannot work from home. People may start to take that into account as they think about their career in the future. Any glimmer of hope for people here, Jean? I think the glimmer of hope is that some of our businesses, including Mayo Clinic, have stepped up. If you look at Minnesota, the majority of the tests now are done now by external laboratories. And so other other companies like 3M, they have they had surge uh, ideas already there. Their supply chain was ready. They've shifted to producing masks, which we desperately need for our healthcare workers. Um, My Pillow is doing the same thing. Love Your Melon is doing the same thing. So I think there's hope. 
that businesses will step up and produce what we need to produce, including the cotton swabs and all the other things. That's our hope. And Gene then Bay. that keeps people employed too. Yeah, right. yeah for sure. Mm -hmm. Gene Bay from Augsburg, thank you so much thank for uh, your insight this morning. We